Howdy, boys and girls. Welcome back to Mr. Herring's fifth grade social studies. I am glad to have you back to do our lesson for today, civil rights. We are wrapping up the year and wrapping up this last unit. And today we're going to talk about the second really big civil rights movement in the American history, uh, the civil rights of the 60s. And so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, like always, if you are filling in your notes, uh, feel free to pause the video while you uh, catch up while I'm talking. Um, or if you can finish them before I'm done talking and go on to the next slide, that works too. Whatever is best for you guys, all right? So here we go. Civil rights, uh, 1960s, uh, civil rights movement. So first of all, what are civil rights? Well, civil rights are the rights that are guaranteed to all citizens by the Constitution. Remember, the United States is a constitutional republic, and there are rights written into that Constitution that all Americans have, that they cannot be stripped of. So if all citizens... <laughs> are guaranteed these rights. What's the problem? If you remember back when the Constitution was written, it said all men were created equal, but that excluded a certain very specific group of people in the United States. And it turns out that not everyone in the United States was receiving the rights they deserved, specifically African or Black Americans, and other minorities were forced to endure mediocre conditions as well. So during the Civil Rights Movement, people stood up for minorities and demanded equal rights for all. <clears throat> One of the biggest issues that came out about after the uh, Civil War, um, when all slaves were freed, was something called segregation. And we talked about this. Remember that segregation um, was a, a separating of people based on their race. So all across the United States, especially in the South, now it, it happened in the North too, don't get me wrong, it was widespread even in the West and the East and the North, but segregation flourished. And segregation is that separation of people based on their race, um, not only race. Now, today we have segregation uh, by all types of things uh, based on your gender. Uh, people are, are segregated uh, based on job skills, all kinds of things today. But in the 60s, we're talking about the separation based on race. Schools, jobs, restaurants, theaters, bathrooms, even water fountains were segregated. Now, if you remember... Um, we talked about uh, certain court cases that came up, um, and they, they mentioned separate but equal. And we all know that um, they were definitely not equal. They were separate, but they were not equal. The, 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 the black schools did not get all the nice things that the white schools got, and the white restaurants were probably a little nicer than the black restaurants and, and so forth. But um, that's how they got around that law. There's a lot of resistance to segregation. Uh, in response to segregation, civil rights leaders began to take action. Uh, they encouraged other African Americans to take a stand. While there was often danger and violence involved, most civil rights leaders called for passive resistance. Now, when I say passive resistance, that means to oppose something or fight against something without using violence. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was very big on being a passive resistance, just like uh, he learned from Gandhi. Uh, Gandhi refused to be violent. He protested without violence. Um, and some examples of this, like we had sit-ins, um, where black protesters would 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 resist by sitting in an all-white restaurant or movie theaters or park benches or bus seats or or anything where only whites were allowed. And of course, uh, they were nonviolent, but the actions against them were definitely not nonviolent. They had boycotts to refuse to do something or refuse to do business with a company or a group um, because they used segregation. They had huge marches, a large gathering of people come together and show their support by marching down the street and they might chant something. And if you're watching social media today at all, you know that there's a lot of this going on today uh, with re uh, in relation to what's going on between Israel and Palestine. Uh, it's pretty bad, but they had a lot of marches. A lot of people came out of this movement, uh, made a big name for themselves. Uh, we get the civil rights leader such as Rosa Parks. Now, Rosa Parks is, of course, you know, she's best known for refusing to give up her seat on a bus to a white man. And she was arrested and they made a really big deal about it. Now, if you remember back, we talked about that she was not the first person to do this. But because it was during this time of this great unrest with, because of civil rights, um, her name became a household name. And everybody learned about what the horrible things that happened to Rosa Parks. Uh, she was beaten by the police. Uh, she was sent to the jail. She was arrested. Uh, got her mugshot taken right here, the number 7053. 
Um, all because she refused to move out of a bus seat for a white man. And of course, this led to one of the largest boycotts ever in Montgomery, uh, the, boy, the Montgomery bus boycott, where all black Americans or African Americans refused to ride on a bus for more than a year. Now, at this time, black Americans were probably the biggest customer of the bus company. And when they all stopped riding the bus, this really hurts the company financially. And so they lose a lot of money and uh, this kind of lends itself to giving in to these civil rights um, demands and making things equal for everybody. <clears throat> Ruby Bridges is another person that comes out of this movement. Ruby Bridges, of course, you may know, is was a young girl who became the first black American or African American student at an all-white school. She had to be escorted in and out by federal agents in 1960 when she was six years old. Her parents enrolled her in the new school. They wanted her to receive a better education than she would receive at the black school because, again, they weren't equal. They were separate, but definitely not equal. Um, Rudy, Ruby had to be escorted into the school by federal marshals and escorted out of the school by federal marshals for protection. Many white students and teachers boycotted the school. It took a long time for the protest to die down, but Ruby helped us create the, in, the integrated schools we have today. Yeah, and this is really funny. Even the students didn't want uh, Ruby in the school. Um, but she was, by law, she was allowed to, to attend that school, and it made significant changes. And, of course, probably the best-known leader of the civil rights movement that we all know about is Mr. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., uh, he, uh, one of the strongest civil rights leaders. Um, Martin Luther King, Jr. was a minister and one of the main, main faces of the civil rights movement. He encouraged passive resistance. You know, he told people, you know, protest without violence. Don't give in to the violence. He helped plan the March on Washington to influence Congress. Uh, at this march, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his very famous and very powerful I Have a Dream speech. Uh, unfortunately for Martin Luther King Jr., he was assassinated in 1968 at the height of his political influence. But his vision was very much widespread all over the country, and his work for civil rights continued even after his death. <clears throat> Another very famous person in the civil rights movement is one of my favorite characters, Mr. Jackie Robinson. Now, Jackie Robinson was the first black American baseball player allowed to play on an all-white team, the Brooklyn Dodgers. He became a Brooklyn Dodger in 1947. Uh, Jackie and his teammates faced violence and threats for his participation on the team. Uh, they weren't allowed to stay in certain hotels when they traveled. They weren't allowed to go to certain restaurants when they traveled. It was really difficult, not just for Jackie, but for the whole team. Uh, Jackie promoted nonviolence, and his talents eventually gained him acceptance in the baseball world. He played in six World Series games and was even inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. His efforts broke barriers for other black Americans in baseball and across the country. And if it weren't for Jackie Robinson, we wouldn't have some of the tremendous black Americans playing the game of baseball we have today. Uh, the next leader we're talking about is Mr. Malcolm X. Uh, Malcolm X is a little bit different than Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was a little more vocal, a little more aggressive. Uh, he was Islamic. Uh, he was an Islamic minister, and he advocated for black American rights. Uh, unlike Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X was known for inciting violence. Uh, he believed that without violence, it's not a very good protest. Um, his fight for civil rights did not... Um, honor uh, uh, integration. He did not believe that integration was, was the key. He, he, he approved of segregation. Like many other civil rights leaders um, fought for integration, he believed that blacks and whites should be separated. He believed in black supremacy and was very harsh against critics. He didn't back down from anybody. He had a strong belief in his, um, in his people, and he believed that they had the right to be their own and, and be separated like, as they would. Uh, Malcolm X, too, was assassinated in 1965. Um, he gained many followers across the country, and, and he's best remembered as one of the most influential African-American, Black Americans of all time. Um, but like I said, he was very, very different than Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the major events. Uh, I've already talked about this, the Montgomery bus boycott. You know, uh, Rosa Parks was arrested in 1955 for refusing to give up her seat. Uh, the black Americans rallied around her and organized a boycott of the Montgomery bus system. Uh, and almost every black American in Montgomery participated in the boycott, which they refused to ride the bus and pay for their, their bus fees. The bus system lost a lot of money, and eventually they gave in to the request, and the bus system was desegregated in 1956. So just a short year later, that bus company had to give in to the demands. We also get something called the Freedom Rides. 
Now, Freedom Rides were these like marches, but they're just mobile with vehicles. Um, they were organized by civil rights activists in an attempt to integrate buses in the South. Activists would ride from north to south, from the northern state to the southern states, and integrate on integrated buses and bus stations and restrooms and water fountains and force people to integrate them. The opposition in the South was strong and many freedom riders were jailed or even beaten. But soon after the rides began, a desegregation order was passed to start integrating the busing systems all across our country. Uh, some other really bad things that came out of these freedom rides, uh, these protesters were, a lot of them more, mostly were white uh, protesters and uh, college kids and they showed up in a town and they weren't really prepared for the violence that they would face. And many of them received extreme beatings and some even died. Another major event was the Great March on Washington, uh, put together by Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, 1963, the major civil rights organizations came together to create a demonstration in Washington, D.C. Their goal was to convince the Kennedy administration, now J John F. Kennedy was president, that African Americans deserve better living and working conditions. Now, it is estimated between 200 and 300,000 people gathered at the march and Dr. Martin Luther King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Uh, after the march, of course, President Kennedy and Vice President Johnson committed to influencing Congress and helping the civil rights movement. Um, and of course, there's some really bad things that come out of the civil rights movement. Uh, after the, the Civil War ended, we get something called the KKK. The KKK stands for the Ku Klux Klan. It was a major force against the civil rights movement. They were a group of white supremacists and they supported segregation. They were terrorists uh, on our country, domestic terrorists. They would bully and pick on black Americans or even white Americans who disagreed with them. The KKK made it extremely difficult for civil rights activists. They used violence and fear to keep African Americans from making a change. Uh, if there was an election going on, they would stand outside and, and uh, intimidate black voters so they wouldn't vote. Uh, and fortunately, in some places, even the law officials were in the KKK, and this made it even harder for black Americans to get a fair trial. And many were even falsely accused of the crimes that they had not even committed. <clears throat> and a, bigger, a big response uh, to the civil rights, uh, it was legislation. Congress finally passed legislation. Real change began to trickle through the United States as the lawmakers started making segregation illegal. Uh, we have the Brown versus the Board of Education. Uh, Supreme Court ruled that segregation of public schools was illegal under the Constitution in 1954. We get the Civil Rights Act, the law that banned segregation in all public places in 1964. And finally, we get the Voting Rights Act. And this was a law that protected the rights of all Americans to vote in 1965. Thousands of African Americans were able to vote for the very first time. <clears throat> Now today, civil rights are very different. Uh, the main civil rights movement lasted from 1954 to 1968. However, the civil rights activism still continues today. Did you know that the KKK is actually still active in some parts of our country? Now, they're not nearly as strong as they once were, but there are small sections of it that still linger in our country. Racism is still a major problem. We need to continue growing as a nation and overturning racism as a whole. And today, racism does not just point towards black Americans, but now we, we seem to have racism against just about anybody. If, if you have a difference in opinion, uh, people will target you, and, and there's all sorts of forms of racism today. So think about this for a second. Have you ever felt inadequate, you know, based on something you, could, you couldn't control? Maybe the way you look, uh, maybe the way you talk, uh, maybe what you have, and, and how does that make you feel? Do we do anything? as a class to make people feel excluded in the classroom? It's a big question. You know, these are things that they're big, they're big issues that even affect students today. And what are some things that we can do as a class that would make everyone feel more comfortable and involved? All right, on your notes, you might have some blank space. You maybe jot down some answers to these questions if you feel uh, so inclined to do so. And finally, I've got a list of questions uh, for you to think about. Um, they're not in your notes, but you could certainly uh, review these. You can pause the video and review these and make sure you can answer all these questions because these questions uh, will show up on a test. Uh, all of these answers will come from your notes today. Um, but that civil rights movement of, of the 1960s in a nutshell. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I kind of went through it quickly, um, but this, the, the school year is wrapping up and this is something that's very, very important and we need to get this in uh, before our final exam. So uh, if you have any questions, please come and see me. If not, go ahead and fill your notes in completely and have a wonderful afternoon. And we will catch you guys on the flip side.
Bye, guys.